and said, let's go to the other side, right? Jesus knew what was on the other side. I'm not sure what. There was a demoniac, crazy guy over there on the other side, had legions of devils, and I mean, he was way out there, and he said, he didn't tell them what they were going to go do, but he said, let's go to the other side. We're going we're gonna to go over here. I'm gonna, we got some we got some stuff we're going to get done over here on the other side, right? And so, here they go. And a storm comes. Storm comes. And so, Jesus is asleep in the boat. Now, Jesus spends time with the Father. It's, it's a great while before day. He goes up on the mountain to pray. And hours and hours at a time, He spends just Him and God. He slips off by Himself. And, and I'm sure he, he operates as a man. So, same, same way as we operate. So God shows Him stuff and God tells Him stuff. And, and I don't know, maybe God should show Him something about the other side or, or how He knew or what. I don't know all that. All I know is Jesus said because He had heard somehow or another that we're going to the other side. It was not like, well, we're going to get there if a storm doesn't come. Or, or we might go if the water's calm enough. Or, or we'll just see what happens and, and maybe try to get over there. No, He said, we're going to the other side. So much confidence that it didn't matter if a storm come. Now this was a storm. He was in the boat with professional fishermen that had spent their life on this boat, in this sea. Now I'd say they don't get upset over a little bit of wind. Wouldn't you? If it's a bad enough storm that these pros are panning water and freaking out, I'd say it's pretty bad, wouldn't you? Wouldn't you say it's probably pretty rough if these guys are having a fit about it? Jesus is sleeping. So much confidence in the Word, in the truth that he is unmoved by the presence of a storm. Unshaken by the presence of a storm. Because I'm going to the other side. I'm not even going to honor the storm enough to wake up about it. Now that's appealing to me because I, I want to be I want to be to the place where every time, because if we're if we're a mess every time a storm comes along and we're we're uh, tore up every time that we have a rough day and this is all and oh my gosh uh, that's burnt my breakfast and then my having a bad hair day all this stuff and we put it all over Facebook and now it's uh, like our day's wrecked and we're up and we're down and we're up. then all the devil has to do is come by and fluff a little and stir this up or make this and say that and we're now we're all a mess and we're all messed up and we're uh, good teaching Jason yes. what a way to live right. what about truth I, I heard this one time or I read this in one book you guys have maybe heard of Smith Wigglesworth he, he was a big timer. I mean, he was a devil whooping dude. I mean, raising the dead. He raised his own wife from the dead so many times that finally, the last time he raised her from the dead, she said, Smith, will you quit raising me from the dead? I'm ready to go on. And I, nah, this is for real. I'm telling you the truth. And so he, he had such revelation way back before, before his time. And he said that when somebody say, how's Smith today? He'd say this, I don't ask Smith how he is today, I tell him. Yeah. Now think about it. What, what was he saying? What's happening around me or my situations or, or conditions or, or all this stuff that happens around or emotions or how this is going or that's going has no influence or effect on what I know and who I am. Is anybody here? Yeah. I'm talking about being established in the truth to where the truth is the loudest voice that we hear. Not only in our ears, but in our heart. It's the only voice that carries weight. It's the only voice that we give an opinion to any longer. In that place, you'll be unmoved. In that place, you're no longer up and down, bad day, better day, oh gosh.
Jesus said this about the truth. If you'll know it, it'll make you free. Not knowing it, you might still be bound. But knowing it, He said, you'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Wow, free sounds pretty good to me, don't you? Free from... Free. He just he just said free. Didn't put any stipulations on it, like leaving you a blank check. Free from what? You name it. Free. Free. Free from depression. Free from oppression. Free from poverty. Free from you name it. Sickness, disease. Free. talking about the truth. I, I, want it. I want so much the truth. It's like rejoices in the truth. Now you think about it, God. Rejoicing. We've really got to change our thinking to even think about Him being happy. Because we've been programmed, whether you grew up in church or not, if you grew up in church, you, you thought God was mad and grouchy and a big man with a white beard and stick and going to whack you and he'd give you cancer, treat you lesson and all this kind of stuff, right? Well, ain't that way at all. He's happy. He's celebrating. He's in a good mood. It says love rejoices. Now, right, God is love. God's having a big time and He's happy about it. And he's really having a big time watching us discover truth and learn it and grow in it. It's like this life. I, I mean, I know about you, but me, I want it to go real fast. I mean, I want to get there, don't you? I, I want to be to the place where everybody I lay hands on gets healed. I'm in a hurry to get to that place. I, I want to get to that place, right? I want to get to the place where I don't care what kind of storm comes along. I'm just going to lay there and sleep my and going to honor it enough to wake up. Right? I want to get to that place. I'm in a hurry to get there. Ain't you? Yeah. Wouldn't you like to just snap your fingers and be there? It's the way we are, right? Microwaves and all that. <laughs> but God's God, and He's really good, and He enjoys the process of watching us grow, be hungry, and learn. And, you know, it's, he's, I'm telling you, He's enjoying that. Enjoying it. If we understand that, and we start growing in that, it starts becoming who we are. Now we start being like Him. Now we're no longer moved. Now we gather truth from a different source than we used to gather. See, we used to gather our truth by how we felt about something, or how it made me feel. Or the reaction. I, I say, well, whether I preach good tonight. See, now where I come from, we used to have altar call, right? And we don't have altar call here. I never did find where they had altar call in the Bible. <laughs> I got in bad trouble now when we first started. I mean, it, hey, no kidding, this place was full for a long time. There was people sitting on them steps. There's was like 300 some seats in here. There was over 400 people in here. I mean, they was hanging off the ceilings and they could, you couldn't hardly crowd them in here. My insurance man used to go here. He was nervous. I mean, he was a nervous wreck. They all said, you got to have an altar call. you got to have this. you got to do this. you got to have all this stuff. I said, no, wait a minute. Tradition has told you that. Where you came from has said that you have that. But show it to me in here. Don't try to turn this into the same thing that you were unhappy with and left. <laughs> I ain't getting on that. But I'm, I'm just saying. That's true. What was I saying? <laughs> true. 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 Believing. Believing. Believing in truth. You sitting right there believing. 
Not doing something, not reacting some way, not having a response. See, I could judge my level of my of how good I preached by how much you responded. Well, what a lie. So now I'm going to gauge myself by how you responded. Now, if I can preach hard and then Jeff can sing a real sad song and make you feel guilty, and I can I can browbeat you and pressure you and get you to come to the front and snot and cry, and I can get a whole bunch, well, I can say I'll go home and put one on them tonight, didn't I? And see, now I'm looking to you to validate me. I'm just using that for example. It's it's in every aspect of life. It's in work. It's in marriage. It's in uh, every everywhere. Every relationship. Every place. We're looking for someone else to validate who we are and wait for the how we've done or not instead of truth. Truth sets us free. Truth sets me free from you. Don't take that wrong. You, you're, you're glad of that, believe me. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm talking about truth, getting established in truth to where you don't need anybody's validation because you already have His validation. Amen. Oh, gosh. That should be a bumper sticker. No, I'm going to say it again. You don't need, you hear me? You do not need anybody's validation. If you still do, there's, there's an imbalance there. You already have His validation. I'm talking about God now. If He says you're alright, excuse me for this sound wrong, but who gives a flip what anybody else thinks about it? Because now we can get to the place where we start hearing what He says about us. What He says about me should carry the most weight of any other voice. See, it's not that we don't want to Hear God. We all, I don't say anybody here. You're here tonight. You want to hear God, don't you? Yes. Hey, man, nobody would ever say, well, I don't want to hear God. I would be fair enough to say that if you're here and you come in this old barn and all this stuff, I, I would be willing to say that there's nobody in here that's just locked arms and grit your teeth and say, I'm not listening to God. And I'm rebellious and I'm not going to do it. <laughs> right? I don't think, isn't it, I don't, there's nobody in here like that. I can feel it if you were in here. And I can. Everybody wants to hear the voice of God. We well, can say, if, if I could just hear the voice of God, and He could put up a billboard somewhere and just call me on the phone and tell me what to do, I'd do it. Y'all would say that, wouldn't you? Here's the problem. This, this, it's not that God is not willing to speak. The problem is now our willingness to hear all these other voices. We've let what they said about us or what they did to us or what they didn't do to us or what they should have done. What this, that, what happened here, what happened there, or failed at this. or We've let all that define us and speak into us. And we've let that have a voice into who we think we are. And we're like this. Good, that's good. And we're having a good day and we're having a bad day. We're having a good day and we're having a bad day. How are you today? Well, <laughs> brother, I'll tell you, put me on your prayer list. <laughs> just, it just proves that we have all these other voices. We have all these other beliefs. We have all this other stuff that we've allowed to speak into our lives. Truth. I'm talking about 
I get to the place where truth is so loud in our ears that no storm moves us. No doctor's report shakes us. Because the devil will be out to test you to try to well, I'll show, I'll show them. Watch this. I'll just, I'll just go and stir this little deal up and I'll show them that. But they don't really believe that. Oh, he'll mess. And he's out to prove you don't really believe what you say you believe. And, and, and then when some mess comes and we're, it, it shakes us. And we're all a wreck and we're full of fear. You know that most of our prayer time is as a foundation of fear. Most of you say, I'll pray for them, I'll pray for prayer request, all this stuff. It's from a place of fear. Oh, did you hear this? Oh, put them on your prayer. List. Oh, I'll pray. Fear! <laughs> Not truth. I think the devil laughs at that. I'm going to stir something up just to see what kind of reaction I get out of it. If I get a reaction out of them, it will prove to them that they're still not living by faith and still not established in truth. What if he comes along and stirs up a doctor's report? What if he comes along and stirs up this and, and this gossip about you and that happens and what, I'll stir it. I mean, he'll stir it. He'll stir. He'll use all this stuff. Try, I'll do anything I can to try to upset you and stir you and prove to you that you're still about you. The minute that it no longer moves us because of truth is the minute you become free. I don't ask Jason how he's doing today. I tell him. Amen. I, I, I give you one more. I've given you this before, but uh, this is this is what hit home for me. Paul said this in Romans 12 too. Do not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, so that you may prove what is the good, perfect, acceptable yes. will of God. Don't be conformed to the world. That's what I'm telling you. Be conformed to the world. I'm telling you, that's what we're talking about. It's how the world thinks. It's how the world reacts. It's how we grew up. It's what we were born in. Well, this makes me feel this way. Well, don't, especially now. Like, well, if it feels good, do it. Right? Well, this feel. It, what are all these feelings? Feelings. Is that all? Yes. What's that doing on? Their, their got so cold it turned the heater on. <laughs> Hunter, there's a breaker over there with a red stripe by it. Just take that breaker off. On the, on the right side, there'd be a red. Turn the air off. Turn the air off. Turn the air off. You cold now? Yes. Yeah. My goodness. Hunter. That real off right there, too. It's the only place you can have heat and air at the same time. <laughs> Just pumping up the temperature. I can, there you go. <laughs> My goodness. Huh? I thought you had the Holy Ghost or something over there shaking. Huh? <laughs> Maybe she did. Oh yeah, okay, he's trying not to be moved by the cold one. I wasn't sitting here in the I was sitting here cold. Do not be conformed to the world. Be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's what we're talking about. Rejoicing in truth. Renewing to your mind to the truth. To where not be conformed to the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It's like when we grew up, we used to gather our information the way the world gathers its information. It's the way we were trained. We were in this system. We still live in it. Yeah. With us, how we gather our information. Well, how's this feel? Or, or what do you think about this? Or this says this. Or the doctor said that. Or the banker said that. Or the therapist said this. Or this. And the TV said that. And the news said this. 
See how much stuff there is? <laughs> Trying to talk and speak into us? Don't be conformed to that system anymore. You now have a new access for truth. That used to be where you gathered information. You got born again. Now we have a new source for information. All that's a lie. We now have truth. Don't be conformed to the world, but be transformed.